What's going on everyone? Welcome back, Patrick here. Moving on to the next video, we're now gonna do an example dealing with the F-test for variances. So I'm gonna show you how to do it manually. And then at the end, I'm gonna show you how to do it with the calculator as well. So you wanna test if the marks from Ryerson vary more than the marks at U of T for the same stats course. You take a sample from both universities and get these results here. At a 5% significance level, what is the conclusion? So we got the sample size, the sample mean, the sample standard deviation for both Ryerson and U of T. Let's pretend that uh, Ryerson is population one, U of T is population two. So you wanna test if the marks from Ryerson vary more than the marks at U of T. And when we're talking about varying, we're talking about variance or standard deviation. <clears throat> So if we were to set up the null and the alternative hypothesis, what you're testing for is if the marks from Ryerson vary more than the marks at U of T. So if this is population one, we're testing if that variance for population one is greater than the variance for population two. So that's the alternative hypothesis. So the null hypothesis is just the opposite of that. So it's gonna be like that there. So notice that we are dealing with a one-tailed test, more specifically, a right-tailed test. Right, so since we are testing variances, we know we're gonna be using the F distribution like I went over in the previous video. And so F distribution looks something like that. And um, we are testing at a 5% significance level. And so that is gonna be over here. So this whole area here is gonna be 5%. This is the rejection region. This is where we're going to reject the null hypothesis. And this is where we're going to accept the null hypothesis. Now, if you remember, the F distribution depends on two degrees of freedom. There's a degrees of freedom of the numerator. And then there's a degrees of freedom of the denominator. And so notice that we let Ryerson be population one. And so that's gonna represent the degrees of freedom of the numerator. It's always the sample size from population one minus one. So 24 minus one would give us 23. And then 28 minus one would give us 27. And so we have to look up the F distribution where there is 5% in the right tailed uh, probability, the right-tailed area is 5%, degrees of freedom of the numerator is 23, degrees of freedom of the denominator is 27. So you can look up that critical value in the table. You can also use a calculator to get it over here. So stat F5 for distribution, F distribution, inverse F, and then uh, here in these inputs, you would put variable for data. The area, always the right-tailed area, 0 0.05. Um, the degrees of freedom of the numerator, 23, denominator, 27. And when you execute that, you would get, uh, end up getting 1.94, all right? So that is the critical value right there, rounded to two decimal places. And then once you have that, all you gotta do is find the test statistic. And the F test statistic if you remember, it's very simple. It's just basically equal, um, sorry, to the sample or uh, to the variance of sample one over the variance of sample two. And notice that we're given the sample standard deviations, right, for sample one and sample two. So to get the variances, we have to square these. So standard deviation is 11, so the variance would be 11 squared over eight squared. 
So just be careful with uh, these types of questions if they give you the sample standard deviations instead of the sample variances. If they give you the sample variances, then you just plug in those full numbers, but sometimes they'll give you the standard deviations where you're going to have to square it. And when you do that calculation, you'd end up getting 121 over 64, which ends up being approximately 1.89. So that's the test statistic. Where does it fall on the diagram? It falls right here, right before 1.94. So notice that this is in the acceptance region where we're continuing to accept that null hypothesis. So basically there's not enough evidence pointing towards the alternative hypothesis for us to drop the null. So the conclusion is that there is not enough evidence from this data over here that the marks from Ryerson vary more than the marks at UFT for the same stats course. Um, another thing I want to point out is notice how in this whole F test here, we didn't even use the sample means, right? So those were just given. Um, but again, we didn't have to use them because we're testing for the variances. So we had to use the uh, standard deviation. So if you're doing an F test and they give you sample means, it's just a trick. You don't need to use them at all in the whole question. And if you were to do this test fully on the calculator, you'd go through these inputs over here. So stat F3 for test and then F4 for the F test. And so you'd get to these inputs. So data would be variable. This here, this input always based on the alternative hypothesis. So notice it's a greater than sign. Also notice in the calculator how it's just the standard deviations, the population standard deviations. Well, Usually when you write it out, it's uh, the population variances. They are squared. But it doesn't really matter. All you care about is what that sign is. And that's the sign that you input in the calculator. So then standard deviation of sample one is 11. This should be N1 actually. N1 is 24. This is eight. And then N2 would be 28. Um, so one thing I want to mention is uh, you got to be careful when you're inputting here. These are always the sample standard deviations. So notice they gave us the sample standard deviations, which is nice, but sometimes they'll give you sample variances. And so if you want to input in the calculator, what you're going to have to do is take that variance and square root it, right? So you would square root that number and you would input it there because this always has to be the standard deviation. And then if you're doing the test statistic manually, it's the variances. So if the variances are given, you just input those numbers. But in this case, if the standard deviations are given, you got to square those numbers, right? So just uh, be aware of that. So for the test statistic, when you're doing it manually, you're inputting variances. When you are doing the F test in the calculator, you're inputting the standard deviations. And when you execute that, you'd get an F value of uh, 1.89 which is what we got manually. And then you'd also get a p-value of 0 0.056 approximately. And notice that that p-value is greater than the significance level of 5%. And as usual, when the p-value is greater than the significance level, it's in that acceptance region. So we fail to reject the null. Right, so a bunch of different ways to come to this conclusion. Basically, there's not enough evidence that the stats marks at Ryerson vary more than the stats marks at UFT.